All right, guys, moment of truth. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Dad Bod Garage. Uh, last video we left off, uh, my fuel pump was leaking. Uh, and as I outlined in the very end of that video, I discovered that the uh, OBD1 and OBD2 fuel hangers are actually different. I actually got one of those right here. I can kind of show you what's different about them. So this is the OBD2 one right here. It's OBD1. So they look pretty similar. They've got pretty much the same uh, plastic casting. So they're very, very similar. But the big difference is with the port right here, it actually goes down all the way um, and then dumps out right here to return fuel back to the tank. So this one has all that same stuff, except this guy has these nubs here. There's a slit here and that doesn't actually go anywhere. So I had to do some quick surgery on that. Uh, this is exactly what the other one looks like, just a little more grungy. The other one has actually a lot newer and a lot less dirty. So I use that one, plus the level sender is a little grody on this one. So figured that out. So. Also, if you can tell, the engine bay is a lot more put together than it was. Uh, if that's any indicator of how it went after that, um, you will know exactly in what direction this video is going to go. Um, however, I did have a request um, asking about the OBD2 swap and how I did it. Now, it will be different uh, depending on what tuning system you're gonna be using, but in this case, it's a um, RK Tunes is the tuning system I plan on going with. Um, I bought an entire kit from a buddy um, that had a lot of the pieces that actually fit this car already. So that made it a lot easier to put this together. Um, I will not claim a lot of this fab work for myself, not because it's bad, but because I didn't actually do it. But it worked out really well. Um, he had it and it was priced right. So. As far as the OBD2 swap, we'll get back to that. Um, the main thing here is that the OBD2 engine will not have all the same provisions as the um, OBD2 engine. The OBD1 engine will not have the same provisions as the OBD2 engine. So the difference is there will be a few sensors that are different. In this case, the front crank sensor, uh, you will have to source one. I believe it's from a European Z3 uh, with the aluminum block, um, that crank sensor, I will actually put that, uh, part number in the description, um, after I find it again, it's been quite a while since I ordered it, I'm pretty sure I threw the box away, um, but I do have that site, uh, saved somewhere. The M50 does not have the rear hole for the crank sensor, so you need to source that sensor, and it was kind of hard to find, it may be better now, um, I could not find a genuine one, so Hopefully this one will work well enough, but I did get one. It was a proper way. It routes exactly the same as the um, OBD1 sensor as far as around the front of the motor. So you can still use a plastic cover that routes it nicely over the uh, thermostat housing there. So moving back just a little bit uh, to the Vano solenoid, you can maintain the original Vano solenoid. Um, in this case, it just plugged into the front of the rail. Um, I know there are differences. I will have to look those up again. Um, for certain year fuel injector uh, harness rails, there will be one that has a Y. This one actually came with it. I didn't end up having to use it just because it was wired uh, or because of the way it was wired. So that just plugged right in. Um, the next thing, um, the um, O2 sensors, you will want to use BMW Genuine. Um, in this case, it was a Bosch sensor. Um, because the OBD, or the OBD2 sensors are quite a bit different. Um, so you will want one of those. Again, this is RK tuned, so I only needed the one that goes right here, and then it goes into the downpipe. Uh, if you're doing it on a car that still has cats and everything like that, or has two banks that you need to monitor, you're still gonna wanna keep that uh, second bank that comes out right here. Um, the next thing, the cam sensor, I have to look up again, I'm not, quite sure if I remember. I think it is an OBD2 sensor. Actually, I know it is because I can see it right now. Uh, and that is an OBD2 sensor. 
So the crank sensor, cam sensor, OBD, or the oxygen sensors, so far will have to be OBD2. Moving down, the coolant temp sensor. Uh, in the M50, there are two sensors. I believe one is just for the uh, ECU, and then another one is actually for the uh, gauge inside the car. And then there's usually a third one on the radiator, but I don't have that one uh, hooked up just yet. But that doesn't have to do with the engine harness. That actually goes to a body harness. So, but for the OBD2 sensor, there is only one. So you will actually have to block off one of the coolant passages that those sensors were in. Uh, with just a regular bolt, you're gonna to wanna to use a crush washer. Um, the, if you have any from the back of the head laying around, because those have a plug in those, uh, you can use one of those or just find a bolt uh, that fits that uh, thread pitch and then use one of those copper crush washers that fits it. So the next thing is the knock sensors from the OBD2 uh, car you will want to use also and you want to make sure those are actually torqued properly because if they're not torqued properly uh, the way the or the knock sensors work is they use vibrations from the engine to determine whether it's knocking or not so if you don't have those torqued properly they're loose or they're over tight um, you're gonna get some weird readings uh, may get to the point where you're not actually registering any knock um, which could definitely lead to some detonation and ultimately blowing the engine up. So you will want those. The next thing is the idle air control sensor. You can use the OBD1 sensor or OBD1 idle air controller. Um, it plugs right in, no problem. And then moving to the throttle position sensor, you can use the OBD1 throttle position sensor. As far as I know, they're exactly the same, OBD1, OBD2. The oil pressure sensor, also is exactly the same. You don't have to change that at all. <coughs> Excuse me. So the MAF sensor in this case, again, I'm going RK Tune. So this is the one that they actually supply when you buy the kit. Again, this one was used, but this is the one that they supplied. Um, so this will actually come with a pigtail and everything if you're using RK Tunes that you will have to wire in. So you'll just wire it into the factory pigtail. All the wires are the same color um, as far as I remember. So you just have to match the wires up and then you'll want to use butt connectors. Do not solder them. Um, that's really more personal preference than anything. But if you go to RK Tunes, you will have to wire that sensor in. So um, as far as I know, everything else, should be able to be reused from the uh, OBD1 car. And then also a lot of those sensors that I cut out or didn't use, they are tuned out. Like I said, the O2 sensors, those will be tuned out. The secondary air pump is tuned out. The um, EVAC canister is tuned out. The uh, fuel pressure sensor that is usually down on the frame rail, the OBD2 car is tuned out. Um, if you want to maintain those things, you can. Uh, just make sure that you have them plumbed properly. Um, but like I said, this is RK Tunes um, as far as the setup goes, so it will be a little bit, bit different. If you do have any questions about it, you can message me directly, either in the comments or on the Facebook page, Dad Bod Garage or Instagram, Dad Bod Garage Official, and I'll be able to help you with any um, questions you may have. Um, some of the questions I may not directly know the answer to, so if you do ask me, I will try to actually find out for you. Um, but as far as the OBD2 swap goes, that is pretty much it. Um, the ECU, you will have to use the ECU that came with the harness. So if you go to the junkyard and you find a, a car there that has the correct sense or the correct OBD2 harness and ECU, make sure you grab all of it because you will need all of that. Um, And then that should be pretty much it for the OBD2 swap. Again, if you have any questions, uh, let me know um, and I will try my best to answer those. But I think this is the moment you've been waiting for. So give me just a second and stop this video so I can actually splice in the original video of the first start. Um, this is not the 
going to be the first start that I'm posting right now, but I do have a clip from the inside of the vehicle when I first started it. So we'll see you in just a second. All right, guys, moment of truth. swap the fuel pump out um, there was no intercooler piping hooked up to it there was no intercooler in here no radiator in here it was literally just starting just so I knew that it started I was checking for any leaks there were a couple leaks they weren't too bad it was stuff that I missed and forgot to tighten um, if there are any other leaks that I find I'll tackle those later but in the few minutes that I was turning it on and off just to make sure I didn't get up the temperature too quickly or at all. Um, I did find a couple small leaks again, um, all from stuff that I changed. So those have all been figured out for the most part. So again, if there's anything else, I will find those and I'll fix those. So I will start this thing for you again. Now that everything is on here, we've got our intercooler piping, intercooler, all the clamps are on here. But I will start it for you. Um, a little note, there is a idle issue. I don't know if it's um, a vacuum or a vacuum or a boost leak or well, it should be a vacuum leak because I'm not hitting boost right now, but it should be either a leak or the TPS sensor needs adjusted some, but it doesn't look like it's ever been loose. But yeah, let me start this up for you. So there you have it. So it starts, super happy. Surprisingly, it didn't run into any issues. It prevented it from starting, which was crazy. But again, if you do your research or anything like that, I'm not tooting my own horn, but it happened to work out pretty well for me, making sure I had all the right sensors, all the sensors were correct sensors, everything. Um, actually, there is one more thing that I want to note or note um, that I didn't before. The, there is two wires, I believe, in here uh, that are for the vehicle speed and the check engine light. So I know the check engine light works in the car, but it's not actually hooked up here. So there are two wires that need to be uh, moved from these other harnesses into here. So you will have to cut down at the bottom here and then splice them into two wires that are over here in order to get that check engine light to work properly. So I will note those probably right around here with form up on the hood. Um, but other than that, you guys see it starts. So there'll be some uh, videos coming in the next couple days, um, hopefully at least, um, of me getting more of the front end on the car, getting all the cooling system plumbed and everything. Um, somebody asked me where I'm gonna be putting my bottle. It's gonna be about right here. Um, again, I still need to put a fan on and everything, but now that it starts, just chipping away at the small stuff so huge moment I've been working on this thing for like five years like I said uh, previously only because of coronavirus did I have time to actually work on it and get some stuff done and thankfully it wasn't laid off at all so still had a steady cash flow coming in so hopefully some of you were not as unfortunate but um, like I said if you have any questions about any of this stuff let me know uh, direct message me and I'll try to answer any questions for you but other than that thank you for watching and have yourself a happy new year and we'll see you next time